All right, so stage one is to figure out how long you want your sleeping pad to be once you've cut it down. In this case, I have the pad sitting next to a ruler, tape measure, and as you can see, the total length is 80 inches. It's actually slightly longer than 80 inches. If you come down to the head end, you'll see that I start mine at the center line of the pad and I don't consider the arch uh, to be part of the pad. Just me, you can do so if you want, but the way I figure is, you know, wherever my shoulder would be at the highest end is where I would want it to be. And usually you've got a pillow up here somewhere taking up a little bit of space. So I just happen to come back to the straight line, not counting the, uh, the arch. And again, this is the Climate Static V Ultra Light Mass Drop Edition. So what I've done is I've marked it out at 48 inches to be able to give myself an idea of what 48 inches is going to be like when I'm laying on it. And we will see, well, I'll see once I lay down on this if that's going to be a good length or not. From past experience, 48 inches is a good length for you know the 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 three quarter length pads as i think the industry is taking to calling them <clears throat> you know where uh inside your tent at night or whatever you end up just putting your sleeping bag down here and your feet rest on your sleeping bag anyway this is part one and i'm going to uh, cut in other sections of this video along with some pictures along the way. All right, so again, I have my tape measure at the line, straight line, come down here. I've got two pieces of tape, one at 48 inches and one at 58 inches. Get her straightened up there. And when laying down on the sleeping pad, and I inflated the sleeping pad, and it's important to inflate the sleeping pad when you're doing this initial measurement because when you inflate the sleeping pad, you actually get a little bit shorter of a pad because as the pad inflates, it shrinks up a small bit. So I actually ended up being uh, at the 58 inch mark in a fetal position, side fetal position, uh, not, not true fetal position, but you know, a, a side sleeper position. My toes ended up being at the 56, 57 inch mark. So again, that, that little bit of shrinkage when it inflates, I figure add another inch. So I'm at 58 inches length. And so that means I will be cutting off not a lot, but I'll be cutting off 23, around 23, 24 inches of the sleeping pad. And I don't know how much weight that's going to save, but we'll see. And, you know, one of the things to remember is you can always, you can always cut it longer, but you can never make it longer, obviously. Uh, so, you know, starting off at the 58 inch mark, sealing it up, laying on it. If I decide it's a little too long, I can always whack off a couple more inches and reseal it and, you know, keep doing that until I find that good point that makes me happy when I'm laying on it. And that's going to be the next step is cutting the sleeping pad down. And one of the things to remember is, uh, you know, you do have valves, you know, the, the air channels in here. So 
By the looks of it, if you come, let me just pull down in here. This is the actual uh, heat seam right here. Uh, don't know how well you can see that in the video, but the heat seam comes in at a V right here. So I will have to end up cutting it somewhere down here. So I might end up being at the 59, maybe 60 inch mark when I make my cut. And you know, one of the things you can do, and I'll talk about this when I'm showing the video cutting it, is you can cut back like this. You don't have to make it, you know, straight. Uh, you know, so just one of the things to keep in mind. Okay, so the next step in this is to make the cut and I'm going to use my sharpest pair of scissors that I have in my house, some gingerbread man scissors. Just happen to be the sharpest thing I have in the house. And I'm going to initially make just a straight cut and then once I have a chance to open it up and actually see how the internal heat seams are, uh, I will make a decision on if I want to make any uh, V-shaped cuts to follow the pattern of the heat seams. So there, 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 there's nothing special. There's, you don't have to be delicate or tender here. You're just making a straight cut. It doesn't even have to be straight, a, a straight cut your first time. You can always come back in and, you know, make a nice straight cut if you do want a straight cut. So there, there's no babying here. There, this is just, this is just a simple straight up Cut, whack, get it out of the way. All right, got that done. And as you can see, it is by no means straight and I don't care. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up and see what we're dealing with here. So we have some, some air pockets here and a weld point here so that's got that closed and then another pocket here another heat seam joint and let's see yeah that's uh got one here and there all right so what we can do with this is you can cut this shorter or you can keep it as length or you can shape it however you want and then you can turn this into a pillow. Uh, that's a, it's a really nice way to get a pillow out of your sleeping pad. And I will probably end up doing this and actually cutting it short and then just coming in at some angle here, uh, maybe a round angle if I can make that happen with uh, you know my ironer and then end up with a, a pillow made out of the same fabric uh, as the sleeping pad. You know, it, it means you end up having just about the same weight as what you had with just the pad itself, but you, you know, you, you get a pillow out of the deal. And it's, you know, just a nice little thing to have. You know, uh, e e even if you were to say cut it like right here and just have a, a you know, a pillow, what is that? Uh, you know, say say a, an eight inch pillow, which is which is that right there. You know, it, it it you know, and then you end up cutting away all of this, and then that ends up being just you know the the, the material that is throwaway that is one hundred percent weight savings gain. So for now, we're just going to move this out of the way and actually take a look at this here. So again, we have a loft pocket there, and this loft pocket goes to this seam. There's a seam right here. And then there's a pocket here. There's a small pocket right here, but there's a seam right here. So there's no need to keep any of this. So, let me pull this up here. I 
just don't really know if I can make this visible on the on the movie. There's a scene, there's a heat seam right here, a manufacturer heat seam. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut it right below that seam and then make a cut here, uh, maybe straight across, I'm not sure, or maybe up to this. Actually, there's another heat seam right here. So there's a small gap right here. So with this tape measure, from middle up, uh, nope, from end point to end point is exactly two inches. So there's a two inch gap right here in where the air flows through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it right here and then cut it here and then cut it down on the bottom side of this seam. So I'll be cutting away all of this and then all I will have to do with my iron is uh, heat seam this, is heat this up right here and seam up a two inch section. Uh, it, it might not look good and you know, it, it, I might have some toe droppage here, but uh, it, we'll see how it goes. You know, I, again, I can always, I can always come back here and you know, seam it up straight if the whole idea of this doesn't work. And it looks like I'll be able to do the same thing here: cut away all of this and then just heat seam a two inch. Yeah, again, just a two inch section right there, and then. Uh, right here, there's an air gap, so I will have to s heat seam this is uh, iron that as well, and that's going to be a about a five inch section. So this is going to be very easy to actually seal up, you know, with two inch, five inch, two inch sections with my iron. And I'm going to start with just whacking away a bunch of excess material and come in here in a short bit once I get rid of all this and actually make a, a cleaner cut. Right now I just want to get the bulk of the material out of the way. Come on. Not being happy. So I do have some loose flappage here. I can cut this back a little bit more, but for now I'm just going to leave it and, you know, just get things set up here to begin the, the finesse work. All right, so there's everything that I cut off on one side. And all of this is seamed up from a heat seam that's right here. And I should have an air gap right there. Yep, I do. And I can fit one finger in there. So that's how big the air pocket is between those for that particular chamber. And then over here, this is all gonna be heat seamed, manufacturer heat seamed. So I don't need to worry about anything else right there. So now to do the same thing over here.
All right, so got that cut off. So let's take a look at what it's gonna look like. So again, this follows this seam. There's a heat seam right here, and there's a heat seam right here, and there's a heat seam that follows up here, and then there's another one right here. So all that we'll have, just recapping here, I'm just gonna have to put an iron on here, here, and here, and then the sleeping pad will be uh, airtight. So let me go ahead and see what kind of weight savings we've got at this point. All right, in order to weigh this, uh, which is the piece that's cut off and the little uh, other snippets that I cut off, gonna have to put a rubber band over this so I'm gonna start by putting the rubber band on here and then zeroing that out for those of that are curious 2.6 grams for that rubber band all right so I've just zeroed it out now we're gonna take the rubber band and now it will stay on there All right, so 79.1 grams. That's 2.79 ounces is what I ended up cutting off. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the length after I've made this initial cut. And if I come straight down from this line, I'm at 56 inches. If I come down to the heat seal lines, I'm at 62 inches. So I have all of this that could be cut off if I wanted to make one straight seam here, or if you wanted to. So if you wanna go the easy route, the just, you know, having that slightly longer length, or what I could do, sitting here looking at this, uh, I could come up one channel and cut it here, and come up instead of down, and then heat seal this, and then I would have this channel here, hopefully you can see this, there's, there's a heat seam right here, manufacture heat seam. Uh, so I could end up cutting off all of this bulk by just coming up here. Uh, and then I would end up with a, uh, a max length of 58 inches and a length up here of 56 inches with a little strange jag that would come up here. Uh, that's that's just going to be one of those things that each of you who do this modification are going to have to decide on your own if you don't want to just make a straight cut. One of the interesting things sitting here looking at this is I've kind of made a quasi pillow here. See what I'm saying? I kind of got a pillow here. If I consider this to be the foot end and this to be the head end, then I've got a built-in pillow that is six inches in a tapering fashion. Uh, so I'm gonna have to, I just, just thought of that standing here looking at this. So I'm actually gonna have to lay down and give this a go, and then I'll report back once I've done that. Interesting idea here. All right, update on the pillow idea. Uh, this is actually really nice. I laid down on it uh, without the, this is the Climate Pillow X Ultralight, which is also a mass drop. And I, so I laid down without the pillow and it actually worked really well uh, as a side sleeper and it should work fine as, a, as for back sleepers. 
Obviously it wasn't inflated because I haven't sealed it yet, but just sitting there with my head on it, it seemed like it was more than wide enough for my head. So I went and grabbed the pillow and there's the pillow. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me, let me actually do it the other way around. So it should work out very well using the pillow and this built-in pillow. Or if you happen to have this, the Climate Seat Crush, I think it's called, which is actually my favorite pillow these days. It's a, uh, I don't, I didn't grab it, but look up the Climate Crush, I believe is what it's called. And it, it, it actually folds up on itself. So it's really sweet for side sleepers. Uh, it has a little air pocket, uh, ear pocket in one end. And it allows you to set how high you want your pillow. So uh, it sh it's gonna fit in there perfectly as well. So. This actually might be a, an interesting concept of going this way with my feet down here and my head up here. But uh, it's not going to be one of those things I can know for sure until I actually get it heat seamed and uh, lay down on it, put some pillows on it, grab a grab a quilt and actually see how, how it all works. Toss it and turn it and that kind of stuff. All right, so we are back and I have a cheap little iron here. I think this thing cost about $12 on Amazon. Uh, it's truly a cheap iron. It's no fancy iron. It's not, you know, whatever a top end iron is. It isn't, it is the, the, the lowliest, cheapest thing I could find on Amazon. I had to buy another one because my, my my previous one just wouldn't turn on. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's just, just an iron, folks. All right, so to show you how easily you bond this sleeping pad, I'm just going to take a piece of scrap material that was something that I cut off and fold it over. And just like that, we now have a piece that is secure. So, what I'm going to do is, just a recap here. I have one airport here. One here that is slightly bigger. can get four fingers into there. And then up here, just another short one. So, just going to go ahead and do this. And that's completely sealed up there. Yep, I got a seal on that one. Can I actually, it, it, it did seal, but I'll just go ahead and hit that right there where there was a little bit of uh, looseness between the two end pieces because I did a really crappy job cutting it. All right, that sealed that up. And that's sealed as can be. So, we know that those are the only three spots, so uh, let me put some air into it and see if it inflates. And more importantly, if my s very quick seam job actually worked. If not, no biggie, just heat her up again.
Oh, I blew a hole in that. I think I blew a hole right there. You put some more heat on it. Looks like I did pretty good on there. You can... I'm gonna pull the phone out real quick here, camera. So yeah, you can see that this is where it got seamed up. Could use a little bit more heat seam right there on that edge. Uh, it's a, not a lot of space right there, so I should probably hit that a little bit more. And over here is looking good. And this spot over here that ended up popping loose on me after putting the iron back on, looks like I got enough Yep, looks like it's gonna be sealed now, but we'll check it just to be sure. And it doesn't matter if you do this while air, you know, there's a little bit of air in here, that's perfectly okay. Oh yeah. Solve that problem there. So let's put some more air into it. And that's all I can blow into it. Tight. Yeah, that looks fine folks. Easy enough. So give me a moment. I'm going to pull the table out of the way, put it on the ground, and lay down on it just to make sure that it's going to support some weight. No reason that it shouldn't, but, you know, always want to check. Don't forget to turn your iron off. Got to fold it over just to give it some additional pressure. Make sure it doesn't pop. Oh yeah, that's tight. I do believe that it's safe to say that that was a success. And there you have it folks, the cutting, resizing, and resealing of the sleeping pad. And just laying on it, I thought that, that was a really nice length, but I had told folks that I was going to cut it down to 48 inches. 
So as much as I feel that that was a really good length, just sitting there laying on it, don't know if you saw, but it, it, it was a almost perfect length when I was on my side, feet weren't hanging off the end. It was really nice when I had my head up on this end, uh, gave my feet a little bit of extra room down there. But I did say I was gonna cut this down to 48 inches and I'm gonna go ahead and do that, even though it means whacking off all of this that makes me happy. I just, I, maybe I'll get another one of these just to, to redo this. And the purpose of cutting it down to 48 inches is to be able to determine what the weight will be at 48 inches. And for that, I am gonna do a straight cut. So let's get started on that. All right, so we're gonna cut this pad down to 48 inches. And I will go ahead and start at the very top, like I suspect most folks are gonna do, which puts it right there. This is a disappointment, because I really uh, am enjoying this uh, built-in pillow in the extra length. So just as a reminder, I'm cutting off uh, let's see, from 48 to 63 and a half. If you come back to the straight line, it's 40, uh, from 48 to 56. So yeah, I do prefer that, that 56 inch length and the 63 and a half inch overall, but so be it. We're doing this for purpose of experimentation and feedback. Because all of you want it at 48 inches, I understand. Yeah, I got a straight enough line there. All right, so I need to grab my iron and we're just gonna hit this real quick. Okay, my iron is hot, or should be. Here's a piece of scrap that I cut off. We're just gonna make sure that the iron is hot enough. And there you go. We got a hot seam. Just going over it a second time just to make sure. It's a little warm. Want to let it cool off. All right, so now we're gonna put some air in it, see if it works. Six breaths of air. Again, six breaths to fill it up. And I had a little bit come out at the end, but that's okay. So yeah, you can see it, it 
held up, put some pressure on the seam. That seam's holding very well. Oh, that's a lot of weight put on it. Let me, uh, let me move the table out of the way and sit on it. Make sure that this seam's really tight. There you go. Project ceiling is finished. Needs more light on that, don't we? As you can see, I did a sloppy job cutting this. It was just, it doesn't really matter to me. It was just a matter of cutting it down to make sure that, you know, uh, the process was gonna work. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the table back over, deflate this, put it on the scale, and see what kind of weight we have. Don't forget to turn your iron off. Okay, so time to put this on the scale and see what kind of weight we have. Oh, wait a minute. That's the Vargo Mass Drop Titanium Bot 700. My mistake, my mistake. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, the sleeping pad fit in there. How about that? So folks, there you go. This is the Mass Drop Climate Static V ultra light sleeping pad cut down to uh, 48 inches I'm gonna put the rubber band on here to get it zeroed out all right got that zeroed out We are now at 208.8 grams, 7.37 ounces. Let me try to get this on the screen. I usually don't have a lot of success doing this, but I'll give it a try. Okay, folks, so there you go. This is this is the pad when it's all said and done. You know, uh, if I hadn't have been shooting this video and was just, you know, wanting to buy the pad and then do a straight cut at 48 inches, uh, you just saw the weight there. And, you know, total time, you know, to actually do this would be under five minutes. Grab a pair of scissors, cut it, Put your iron on it, seal it up. You saw how fast that took. That took maybe, you know, uh, a, a couple of minutes at the most. And boom, you're done. And it really is that easy to reseal these climate sleeping pads. And again, just to show you, this is the Climate Static V Ultra Light. And this is a mass drop edition. And that concludes this video.